Aubrey, the sun is out in Portland. I am so happy. Um, I bet you the sun is out in Arizona. The sun is always out in Arizona. I have my niece and nephew were out of town and they came back and they're like, oh, we forgot. It's been gray and dreary their whole winter break, wherever they were visiting. And then they're back and they're like, well, I think we haven't seen the sun in two weeks. So we forgot Seriously? that it's always sunny here. It's funny how it affects your mood. Oh, Does it definitely. Affect your mood to have the sun be out. Oh, for sure. Um, so, listeners, there is actually a, um, a, a mental, not a, a mental disease, a mental problem, a challenge, an issue um, that is documented. It is called SADS, seasonal affective disorder, and it's it is documented. Like if you don't see the sun, uh, people get depressed. But it's funny that the acronym is. SADS and it's for seasonal affective disorder. Um, so yeah, it's a thing for sure, especially up here in the Pacific Northwest where the sun uh, hides for a long time. It really hasn't so bothered me until out. this year, but this year is tough. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Okay. A lot. And then I feel like when it does come out, you catch that fever of excitement and happiness just because it's sunny. Look at you, Segway Queen. Woo! Guys, <laughs> that was masterfully done. Um, yes. <laughs> what does that mean when we say, like, catch the fever? It's not about being sick, right? This is a great no. IELTS idiom. What does that mean? Uh, yeah, exactly. Because you have definitely heard fever associated with sickness where your temperature rises and you, you have an infection somewhere that your body's fighting off. We also use this idiomatically. If there's any general feeling that exists out, maybe people around you maybe feel something, then if you start to feel it too, you say you're catching the fever. Oh, whenever somebody around me is excited, I catch the fever and I get excited too. <laughs> totally. Um, but, okay, so here's another, here's one more example, guys, and then we're going to um, share with you some some things to watch out for on a popular IELTS website, guys, so you know how to prepare with the best and you don't learn the wrong things. But first, just one more example of this idiom, because you could use this on the speaking test easily in speaking part one, um, just talking about things you like. So for example... Just recently, um, Aubrey and I caught the Wheel of Time fever because we were both so <laughs> obsessed with the show. So you can use this to be like catch the something fever um, to talk about things that like you're obsessed with, that you're really into. You're like, oh, I caught the gym fever. I caught the Peloton fever. Whatever is like your recent obsession. Yes, exactly right. There's a very famous Saturday Night Live skit with Christopher Walken where he's saying, oh, got a fever. The cowbell skit. With the cowbell. The cowbell. If you guys haven't seen that, look it up. I think you can search cowbell and it'll Definitely. probably come up. Cowbell. But that's what he's talking about. He's like, I got a fever. It means like, I'm feeling this. I'm, I'm catching this feeling. Oh my God. That is one of the most famous SNL skits. That's like probably the first SNL skit I showed my son. Um, okay. Because sure. it's like... The it's the best. Uh, I could quote it. Every now and then I'll hear a cowbell in the background ding, of a song. Ding, I'm like, ding, cowbell. Ding. Whenever that song comes on the radio, I'm like, James, going to catch the fever. Cowbell. Okay. So, um, guys, cowbell. let's get into um, let's get into this critique of a very popular IELTS website. I don't think we're allowed to name it. Um, so, we are just going to describe some things you guys should watch out for when you are looking online. So, Again, um, I've been doing some keyword trending searches, guys, and I know this website is popular because it has a very high search number all over the world. Um, and it is not created by natives, native speakers, let alone IELTS experts, okay? So that's the first thing to know. When you click on the About Us section of any test prep website, you need to make sure you are dealing with professional IELTS people, right? Yeah, exactly. We can go to that website and we're immediately seeing grammar errors, um, lots of problems, but you might not recognize those as a language learner right away. So Jessica's exactly right. Go to About Us and find out who is making this content. Not only should they be native speakers, but they definitely should be IELTS experts. They should have actual experience in this field with the IELTS exam so that you can trust 
the information that you're getting there. Yes, exactly. So that's that's the first thing um, I noticed when I just clicked on the about us section. Right? They are they are none of those things. <laughs> the creators mm -hmm. of this website. Um, the second thing that jumped out at us immediately was the amount of advertisements. Guys, um, this is one of those websites that look like it is just created for the owners to make ad money. Okay. If, if you see too many websites, if it's websites, too many advertisements, that is also a huge red flag. Okay. Now let's get into the actual IELTS materials that are on this website. So Aubrey took a look at some writing and I took a look at some speaking. Let's talk about that writing first. Um, what should students notice when they see this? Is this a model essay? Is that what we're looking at? Yes. So I looked at a few of their model essays. They're providing the topic and then just a model essay that they're claiming would be high scoring on IELTS and they are not. The grammar is very poor, first of all, and the structure is very poor. You know, one sentence of uh, an introduction that's very much like, I, today I am going to write about this. That's a very low scoring. Is right? that the first sentence then, of their task two essay? Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like worst case scenario. So how right? like just taking that immediate first sentence, how would that affect the IELTS score? Your fluency and coherence score is going to go down. Well, fluency because... and coherence is speaking. Oh, I mean, sorry, cohesion and <laughs> coherence, thank you. Yes. Cohesion and coherence. Yes. Because there's not a high level organization. Totally. Here. Your introduction should be impressive with a good topic sentence and a thesis. And if that's missing, you can't score seven or higher for cohesion coherence. Exactly, exactly. And it also sounds like there's very simple vocabulary. Is that true? Yes, exactly. Incorrect and simple vocabulary. So again, your vocabulary score would go down because not only, and the, the, the other thing I can see as a real red flag here is if you're trying to learn vocabulary from this website and then learn it in the wrong context, you would then use it on test yeah. day thinking, oh, I learned this correctly, pulling down your score. So not only is it low level common vocabulary, but I'm seeing vocabulary that's used incorrectly. So that's really a double whammy. That's really going to hurt your score. Gosh, you know, um, we get asked our advice all the time about different test prep materials, right? Um, and it's often it, like free websites or books that are uh, only available in certain countries. So um, like just as an overall piece of advice, right? I would always say that the number one thing is to look for who wrote this book, you know, who created this website. And then like Aubrey said, guys, you if you are looking at this vocabulary and you see it's repetitive, you are doubting some of the usage, you are wondering about the spelling, that the, don't look at it anymore. It's not going to help you. Um, is there anything else you notice in this quote unquote model essay that would actually hurt the score of this, of this writing? Yes. So one of the, the first body paragraphs I read, I'm seeing several new ideas about the topic, none of which are supported. This is a common mistake made by students and language learners mm -hmm. when they don't know much about IELTS. Mm -hmm. They're thinking, here's the question. I'm going to give a bunch of ideas. That's going to get me a high score. Nope. If those ideas aren't supported with details yep. and examples, you cannot get a seven or higher for task score. You probably can't even get a six or higher with these essays. We're looking at band five essays on this website oh, that are claiming to be band seven or higher. And oh my gosh. Um, you know, hearing you talk just that reminded me of Riaz's interview yesterday. Guys, if you haven't listened to Riaz's interview from yesterday, he got an overall eight. He really just shares some great advice for your preparation. So go back and listen to yesterday's episode. But um, he talks about like one specific thing that really helped him increase his writing score was just that the support, like getting the feedback from us. Um, because he didn't, he didn't realize that he wasn't supporting it well or specifically or enough, right? And so 
gosh, guys, it is so hard to catch those things yourselves, even if you have learned the strategies and you know what you're supposed to do. Um, and so seeing websites like this just really makes our job so much more difficult as IELTS teachers <laughs> because it's just giving you bad information and then it may contradict some of our advice and you think, oh, well, look what this website did, right? So again, guys, always go back to who is making this material. So last thing, guys, what I noticed from the speaking answers, there are um, questions and model answers. And honestly, like there's even a grammar error in the title of the page because it's like um, IELTS speaking part one questions with answer. Like it should be answers. So if there's even a mistake in the title, I'm just mind blown. Um, so here's the first thing I don't like about this. Um, the model answer. If you if you're just listening to the podcast and not watching this on YouTube, you won't see my my quotes. Um, you also won't see that I have a uh, tattooed quotation Ooh. marks on my fingers just just to make that gesture funnier because that's how committed I am to comedy. Um, I so I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so guys, the first thing I see here, um, it, it the first model answer is one sentence. It's one sentence. And it's funny because sometimes we get comments on our model answers um, that we do on YouTube and it'll be like, these are so long. I can't talk like that. That's, you know, like that's impossible. These aren't good models. And I'm like, we're giving you band nine models. We're giving you something to reach for. Right. Um, and this is the bottom of the barrel. Like this flu fluency and coherence it's one sentence. It's, it's not fluent. <laughs> um, and the vocab, and even in that one sentence, there are three grammar mistakes. It says, get new stuffs, stuffs. There's no S on that. It's uncountable. It's a group noun. It's already plural stuff. Ugh. Okay. Um, so the second thing to watch out for is incorrect and repetitive vocabulary. Um, just I'm looking at a, another model answer on uh, on this page, and it is again only one sentence, and it repeats one vocabulary word, namely items. It repeats that one word three times in the one sentence. So if you see repetitive vocabulary, also red flag. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, now, Aubrey, where should people go for better IELTS advice they can trust on the internet? Don't go to th these websites, right? Where should they go? No. Yeah. So definitely I can't, you know, help but offer our website. We have the podcasts you've done for years back and that I've started since I started here. We have a blog write up for a lot of these. You can listen to our old episodes, read the blog write up. There's a wealth of information there and you know, you can trust it based on Jessica's 14 years of examiner experience. You're not going to find grammar errors. You're not going to find bad advice there. And then YouTube, right? Our YouTube channel with our videos and a description there. There's so much information going back years and years and years. So many videos. None of that is outdated, right? If there is anything that changes about the IELTS exam, we let you know because there are sometimes changes with the exam, but the strategies stay the same. So guys, um, we also want to make a quick announcement before we finish up today. We are changing to only two episodes a week as of next week, guys. Two podcast episodes a week. We will be publishing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So still stay subscribed because we will still come out with two new episodes every week. And if that means that you miss us and you need more, remember we have a special YouTube series as well we're doing right now that is only available on IELTS Energy TV with model speaking answers and real examiner feedback on, on what you could learn to increase your score, right? We're talking about today things to watch out for online and this is what you need to look for is real scoring advice from experts like us so definitely subscribe to IELTS Energy TV if you have not already um, and then go ahead and take our free IELTS quiz go to allearsenglish.com slash my score all right awesome Aubrey thanks this was a this was a some tough love we're giving our students today Yes, right? But we, I can imagine a world where you guys get this bad advice. 
do terribly on IELTS and are so frustrated because you followed the advice that you found on some website. So definitely better to get the tough love now and realize I can't trust everything that's on the internet rather than face that scenario. So we want to give you that information here. Really beware, guys. Be cautious of just using any any website that you find online. Totally. Totally. All right. Well, thanks for chatting today, Aubrey. Yep. Thanks. See you next Bye. time. Bye-bye.